It is little known that the history of copyright law begins with the Breton laws of ancient Ireland, over a thousand years before it appeared in any legislations. Copyright law is probably the most commonly recognised type of law on the planet. But the genesis of modern copyright protection, as we know and understand it, was not officially formalised in the English common law until the Statute of Anne in 1710. And while the Statute of Anne is considered a watershed event in copyright law, we should remember and appreciate that the jurisprudence and guiding principles of this significant area of law were first established in Ireland about 1,200 years earlier, in the year 563. It began in 563 AD, where a disagreement arose between two of the top players in the monastic schools of Ireland, St. Columkill and St. Finian, each claiming the rights to St. Jerome's Psalter, a manuscript. The defendant was St. Columkill, also known as St. Columba, born in Garton, County Donegal, he was a descendant of the O'Neill clan. A wealthy man, he was the son of Princess Etna and his grandfather has the honour of being the man who originally brought the slave boy St. Patrick and gave him his name. Founding several monastic settlements during his lifetime, Colum Kill left a lasting mark on Ireland. His first foundation was in Derry and his last, as will be revealed, was on the island of Iona. The plaintiff, was St. Finian of Clonard, a contemporary of Colum Kill from Carlow, who was also born from an Irish noble family. A highly educated man, he was known as the Master of the Saints of Ireland. He even tutored Colum Kill as a young man and many other saints of the time. The Case The plaintiff brought a case against the defendant, claiming that the defendant had copied a manuscript that the plaintiff had created without permission a book of prayers called St. Jerome's Psalter. Both sides pleaded their case fervently and the Breton ultimately ruled in favour of the plaintiff, saying, To every cow its calf, and to every book its little book. Which amounts to saying, To every cow belongs its calf, and to every book belongs its copy. While being wise, just, and even poetic, this judgment alone was not binding on the parties, because Abrahen's judgment was merely a respected opinion and carried no enforcement mechanism outside of public condemnation for those who ignored their solemn opinion. In this case, the Abrahen's judgment was not enough to settle the dispute, and ultimately a bloody battle broke out between the rival factions of Columkill and Finian after a group of Columkill supporters rose up against Finians. In the end, Colum Kill fled from Ireland and lived out the rest of his days, writing more manuscripts on Iona Island. There are accounts suggesting that Colum Kill fled Ireland either because he felt guilty or ashamed for all of the bloodshed caused in the battle. The interesting thing about this judgment is that the principle is articulated through reference to something which occurred and was visible in the natural world, the birth of a newborn calf. The line of reasoning here is that a cow gives birth to a calf, a new creation, and that a calf is inextricably and naturally linked to and therefore belongs to its mother or creator. The principle was then applied to someone who creates a new body of original work, a manuscript creator, for example, and it reasoned that the creator of a manuscript owns it and should therefore be justifiably compensated by those who copy it without the consent of the original author. Mm -hmm.